All right, welcome everybody to uh, the Bamboo Solutions webinar, Three Must-Have Products for SharePoint Online. I'm Rob Manfredi, I'll be your host today. Um, we are recording this. We'll send around uh, a recording uh, after the webinar so that you all can share it with your teammates. Um, we're gonna run through a couple components. We're gonna do a short PowerPoint. Each PowerPoint, we'll talk about our licensing and our approach uh, there. And then each of the products will have a little overview. Then we'll do a demo of the product and then we'll wrap it up with a pricing section uh, for those actual products. So um, again, we've got the three must-have products for SharePoint Online by Bamboo, and let's get into it, uh, and we'll respect everybody's time here. All right, see a bunch of people joining. All right, uh, for housekeeping, uh, we do have um, the chat or the Q&A area that I'll be monitoring, so if you have any questions, just type away in there and I'll get over to them um, and try to respond uh, during the webinar. If not, I'll email you afterwards if it's a little more complex of a question, but I'll repeat the question to everybody. I think you can see them, but if not, uh, you'll understand uh, what the question was and how to answer it. So again, we're gonna do a short PowerPoint. We're gonna do a tour of our uh, website, and then we're gonna do a quick overview of each of the three products. Um, and a demo of each product and also show you how to set it up uh, and the like. So let's get into it here. So about Bamboo, we are a leading provider of enterprise class software applications and consulting services for SharePoint and Microsoft 365. Uh, we've got customers large and small out there. Um, and uh, right now we've served over 8,000 customers. We currently support about 2,000 organizations worldwide. Uh, with our products both on-prem as well as in the cloud and SharePoint online. Um, we think our experience makes us the best in class uh, for this software. Uh, we've been doing this for 10 years. Um, we have been developing products for SharePoint online since 2017, 2018, and uh, the products are super mature now. They're scalable, uh, they're feature rich, uh, and we always say what we like to provide are low cost, high value solutions that are really assisting the user experience uh, in SharePoint Online, really filling that functional white space of, um, of what SharePoint needs to do or users would expect it to do, but is not quite doing it today. And this was true in the on-prem world, and it's even truer now in the SharePoint Online world. Um, our products are what we call SPFX solutions. They are not add-ins, right? So we've seen some things that Microsoft is going to uh, discontinue support for add-ins. These are not add-ins. These are the best, Microsoft suggested best practice for third parties to create products in SharePoint Online. They're fully supported now and in the future. So rest assured, these products will work forever. Um, so what does that mean? It's an SPFX solution. Well, what that means is that we code our solutions to use the SharePoint framework. That's then the products are added to your SharePoint app catalog. And then admins add that to a page, configure it to a list or library, and then users access it through the web browser like they would any other SharePoint online page. Um, our products are available both from our website or Microsoft App Source. So they have been vetted um, by App Source. I think we have 26 products now. I wanna say 18 of them are available. On the app store it is a process that we have to go through um so uh, we're going to get them all there at some point um and the like so the products are fully functional within your sharepoint online environment it's not a SaaS solution it's not a pass solution um so therefore we sell these as perpetual license and maintenance um, model. So uh, everything, we do not touch your tenant. We don't automatically update your tenant. Um, it is a piece of software that you install into your app catalog. You have full control over it and there is no talk back to uh, Bamboo. So that should make your InfoSec folks or any of your uh, security folks uh, feel comfortable that the products have one, been vetted by Microsoft and two, they are completely self-contained within your SharePoint environment. All right, so for licensing, we talked about it. It is a single price for your entire SharePoint online tenant. So that means you can put the products on as many site collections as you like or on as many pages as you'd like. 
um, and um, for as many uh, users as you'd like. So there's no limitations, there's no subscription, there's no per user per month pricing and the like. It is a perpetual license and maintenance. So we're old school over here. Um, we do have support that comes with the product as part of your maintenance, and that's phone support Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. East Coast time. Um, for any questions you have on how to implement the product best practices, or even if you want to walk through and help with setting it up, we're there for you. Um, second year, there is optional maintenance, which would continue that help desk and support uh, as well as new versions of the product, bug fixes, as well as new features. And that is typically 22% of your purchase price. So let's say the product is $4,000 for your perpetual license, which includes first year maintenance. Second year, it would only be $878 to stay on that maintenance. We do have an additional support cost, not a product fee, uh, for customers that have more than 2,000 SharePoint users. They just require a little more support and have more tickets. So we do have a, a modest upcharge on the support, uh, not on the product purchase, which we'll get into. Opposite of that, if you're a small group, if you're a not-for-profit under 300 employees or a business that has fewer than 100 employees, um, we actually do a maintenance-only perpetual license. So you would pay just simply the maintenance cost and you would own that product as a perpetual license moving forward. So for example, if the product is $4,000 and you're an organization with 50 folks or 75 folks, you would only pay $878 uh, to buy the product and then your maintenance thereafter would be $878. So we really wanna make these products accessible to large and small organizations. And that is all outlined on our website, which I'll show you when we do the tour. If you're a larger group, if you're over 2000 users and up to 10,000, we will charge a $2,500 support fee per account, not per product. So you can have five products, Pricing is on our website, but you would also be given an additional upcharge of $2,500 per year on top of your normal maintenance cost. If you're over 10,000 to 100,000, uh, there's the fee. And then if you're over 100,000, which we've got a couple clients that are over 100,000 users, um, we do have a, a higher level support. We also include free consulting with that uh, up to a certain number of hours. If you're right on the cusp, call us. We can make deals. If you're, you know, I'm only 11,000, do I have to go all the way to the tier three? We had to draw the line somewhere, but we're reasonable folks. Um, we're a team of 40 that uh, really want to get our software out there um, uh, into your environment. So please give us a call. We're reasonable people and would love to talk with you. Uh, we also do services for SharePoint, right? So we do migrations and support. Uh, we've got a great program called Microsoft 365 Plus, which is a help desk for all things Microsoft 365. Um, we've done migrations to the government cloud and government cloud high. We can do architecture. We can do power app development. We can do custom development. Uh, really, we do all things uh, out there. We've got a great team of consultants that help our clients, not only with the products, but also just anything related to Microsoft 365. Okay, uh, let's jump into the first product. And then um, before we actually get into the product, we'll do the website tour um, and then the demo, and then we'll move to the second product. All right, again, if there's any questions, use the Q&A section um, or the chat, and uh, we'll answer those as we move through it. Okay, Tabify. This is an amazing product. It truly is a must have for every, uh, SharePoint portal out there. And what it does, it allows you to organize your pages, multiple web parts into a tabbed interface so that you're saving screen real estate and it's better navigation for your users, right? So you're organizing a page rather than being a list of whole bunch of web parts, um, you're organizing it, uh, uh, the content together so that users can easily uh, absorb what they're seeing, right? So we're visual clarity, we're reducing the cognitive load on, on your users um, to understand the information and organize it, easily uh, navigate through these tabbed interfaces. And also for a mobile friendly experience, the tabbed interface really does provide a nice um, uh, experience. And we'll, we'll show you, we've got a nice uh, blog on the benefits of tabbing, but essentially um, whatever, uh, web parts are in a zone, Tabify will tab them. And it creates, uh, we've got a bunch of different new styles for the tabbed interface. This is called the pill. 
um, but we could do outlines and we'll see that during the demo. Uh, if you put it in a, a two column, three column or full, it will take up the full real estate, but you can put it into a little corner and you can see we've got a recent documents and events and an org chart uh, uh, web parts all in a nice tabbed interface here. Um, headers can be customized, so these labels can be customized. Um, all web parts that exist in the web part zone are automatically tabbed, multiple styles. You can exclude web parts if you desire. Um, and there is a free version of this product as well. The free version uh, will only let you tab uh, three web parts, and then it will just push the rest at the bottom. There is one tab style, and we do have a small bamboo logo on it, but it is fully functional, um, and we'll see that as well. Uh, it works exactly the same, except uh, only three tabs are available. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the website tour. Uh, we'll do a little extra on this website tour. Um, first of all, our homepage uh, has access to all the products uh, and services uh, that Bamboo has to offer. If you go into our products, the blue on the left are all of the SharePoint online products and that view more is important because that's just a little subset of our most popular that we see there. We can see the small business pricing and discounts uh, called out down there on the left that you can learn more about that. The green products on the right are all of our on-premise products which we support SharePoint 2016, 2019 and 2022. Currently the SharePoint online products do not run on-prem. Right, the frameworks are completely different in SharePoint on-prem versus SharePoint online, even in the modern experience, SharePoint on-prem. At some point, the SharePoint on-prem framework will match the SharePoint online or at least come close, at which point our SharePoint online products will work on-prem. We're just waiting for Microsoft to catch up, okay? Um, if we jump into our view more, You'll get a complete list of our products with a nice little description of each of those, right? So we're going to look at Calendar Plus today. Um, we've got a great directory product that allows you to pull in um, a directory of your users and contact information, and you can organize it by region, by SharePoint group, by Active Directory group. Um, we've got uh, some nice, great printing of list data, news items. We've got an org chart product. Um, we've got a simple list search, which we're going to see today. We also have an advanced list search, which we're going to see today. And we've got Tabify in here. If you go to the product page, um, usually there's a video. The user guides are located here and some screenshots and then the pricing of the product. So this product is $1,995. Um, that's the perpetual license with first year maintenance. Second year maintenance is 22%. We've got links again to the small business pricing and then links to the enterprise pricing, which we saw here if you have more than 2,000 users. We do bundle discounts. Uh, two products are 20%, three products or more are 30%. Happy to talk to you about that if you want to access more of our catalog. The try buy button here on the left is how you can get a trial of the product. Um, there's the trial tab, there's the purchase tab, and then the latest release notes are here as well. You can add to the cart, check out, no credit card needed for the 30 day free trial. That is a full featured product. Um, after the 30 days, it reverts to the free product for Tabify. Um, or if you purchase it, it will then keep all the features that you have in there. All right, so a lot to swallow there. But again, each of the product pages has our pricing, user guides, and then access to the trial. That's all self-service, no credit card needed. We are there for you during your trial, full support with our team. We'll help you install it. We'll answer any questions. We'll even give you a walkthrough of how it works. So let's take a look at Tabify. Now, the Tabify on here is still the older version, which we're not seeing today. The new version will be available next Wednesday on our big product release. We'll email you all when it is available. So if you go and access a trial today, it may look a little different, but rest assured you can upgrade it uh, to the new version when it comes out next week. All right, so we've got Tabify here on a page. And what the users see is, and this is, these kind of don't necessarily like these colors, it is picking up the colors of uh, your theme, but we've got a recent docs, we've got an events, right? And we've got an employee directory. And this is actually another one of our products. This is pulling from Active Directory, pulling in a searchable, uh, clickable directory of people. And then those people you can actually call 
uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one of our other products called Directory Plus that has just simply been into this tabbed interface. I've got it in a small column over here, but of course you can make it as big as you want based on what you put on there. So how does this thing work? Well, it works a lot like all of our products, right? So if I edit the page, um, I get access to the Tabify web part, which is simply put into the zone with all of my other web parts. So as I add more web parts to this zone, Tabify will recognize them and Tabify them um, and the like. So um, uh, the settings, right, allow us to one, add the titles that we want for the tabs, so they don't have to be something crazy that is set by the, the web part itself. Um, and then we can have up to 10 tabs, right, which is plenty. They will scroll on top of each other if you have them in a small so that you get two rows of tabs. And then we've got our theme settings, right? So we've got an underline, an outline, pills, brick, overline, or block. So if we uh, change it to a brick, we can actually left justify the titles or center them. We'll save it, update those settings, republish. And now instead of that pills look, um, we've got uh, the bricks, which actually is a little bit nicer uh, for the style here. You can read it a little bit better. Okay, and that's how Tabify works. Now the free Tabify only does three. The paid for can do up to 10, and I think you can go beyond 10. There's supposed to be an infinite number of tabs, but uh, maybe 10 is, is what we're coming out with the first release. Um, and then um, for the free version, you only get uh, the outline style. So it would be, I'm sorry, the underline style. So this would be the only style you get and then three tabs, which, you know, for small organizations or, you know, what have you, it, it may be enough, but it is completely free and uh, it would look something like this. Okay, so that's Tabify. I'm telling you, when customers buy this, they use it everywhere, right? Because you, you don't want to have a full scroll down of, of all the web parts that you want to put on a page. Um, it would be, you know, an experience like this and, and, that's a little bit of an overload, right? Especially if you want to save that real estate for users. So super useful, inexpensive at $2,000 or even a free version and the like. So add it to your app catalog, add it to a page. Tabify does its work from there. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. I don't see any questions yet. Okay. The next one gets a little more complicated in terms of its setup because it's pretty sophisticated, but it provides a ton of uh, features for searching for list items or documents in a document library um, for users. All right, and uh, let's go in and take a look at this. So list search is a web part that you point to a document library or a list, and it allows you to cr create or select the metadata or list columns that you want users to search for. And this search targets a specific list or library so that users get relevant results. And it's a lot different than the, the, the search at the top, which we'll talk about, but it allows us to say, you know what, I wanna find all documents that were created between or by a certain date or between a set of dates that um, was part of the finance department or that was created by a specific person and then do a search. And what this allows you to do is create complex searches without having to figure out how to create complex searches within the search bar. And I'm getting specific results back. Plus it can cross site collection. So if you put this on a team site or a project site, but all the documents exist somewhere else, then the users don't have to navigate over there to find them, right? So they get the search results faster with more relevant relevant results. Um, and uh, it also does whole word terms and partial word matching with a lot of flexible display options. So the key features that make this search better than the out of the box search is you don't have to learn how to do the and or operators in the search bar. 
Number fields and currency fields and Boolean fields can be searched. They're not searched in out-of-the-box SharePoint. Operators such as is equal to, is greater than, or is in between are quickly selectable. That is, you can specify like a range of numbers or currency fields or dates. You can target the search to specific lists or libraries. You can do partial, wor partial word searches, which out of the box SharePoint does not do. Um, you can filter the results. Um, and then you can export those results as well. There's a bunch of highlighting and the like. So we do have a great blog on our website that talks about all of the different features. Now, that simple list search. What we're also going to see as it is advanced list search. And what advanced list search does is it combines list search with another one of our products called list rollup. So what list rollup does is it allows you to bring together multiple document libraries or multiple lists. Uh, into a single search schema and then pointless search at that schema. So why is it advanced? Well, it allows you to search multiple things at once from one uh, by executing one single search, right? So list rollup is a dynamic product that allows it to look for lists of a certain type or a certain name within sites, within site, within the site and subsites or sites and sister sites and bring that stuff together. Um, so essentially, you create a list rollup schema from a bunch of different lists or document libraries, and then Simple Search searches that list rollup schema. So that's the advanced search piece. So out of the box, Simple List Search can search a single document library. You can have multiple list searches, so you know to to do multiple, or you can add the list rollup product and then combine it all together into a schema. And we'll show both of those. Right? What's nice is that schema, right? can exist anywhere, right? And you can, you know, look at your different lists or libraries from different site collections and then search it that way. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like um, in there. All right, so the simple list search, right, is um, essentially you put the web part on a page after it's been configured and you can look for um, items. So let's just search for everything, right? And we've got a whole bunch of information that's come back here. So um, what I can do is say, um, I'm going to look for the title of the document that contains the word lead, right? And what we found here is a bunch of documents. Now, if I wanted to refine that even uh, further and say, you know what? I know it was modified by uh, Rob Manfredi and do a search, it actually combines those two together and finds the document that contains the title lead and was modified by Rob Manfredi. That's super powerful. So this search up here is only going to search the current site collection and it's going to search everything, which is frustrating for users. It's great for certain things. But if I want to search a document library and that document library exists in another site collection, this is the product to do it. Plus, it allows you to create some very complex searches, right, that you really can't do with this search bar up top here. OK, makes sense. Let's take a look at um, how this is set up. So once you add it to a page, it's very simple to do. Um, you go into our edit. It brings out the flywheel. And you can say, all right, first of all, am I going to search a list or library or am I going to search a schema, which we'll talk about in advanced search? You simply put in the URL of where your list or library lives. You grab the list or library from that URL, so it'll load all the lists. And then you choose which fields from that list or library you want to include in your list search. And it will build this form automatically based on the column type or the metadata type to put in these equal to's or people pickers or things like that. You can change the order, right? So you can move these things up and down. You can include all of them, some of them, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can do some nice things like including partial cell search or whole word search. Uh, you can do an and or an or across the whole search library here. And then um, uh, you can change the title of what you want over there on, on the search. So once you've saved that, you can then say for my results, you can define a custom column of what you want in your search results, or you can create a list view, right? That shows how your results are displayed, change your highlighted colors, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then really you're pretty much done. And what you get is this result here and your users are now searching. If you wanna move from the simple search to the advanced search, you need to add a list schema. So I'm gonna do a quick demo of list rollup uh, and how you built the schema. So essentially what we're gonna do in this schema is bring a whole bunch of document libraries together and then um, use that as the schema for the list search. So I'm gonna just give it a schema name. I'm going to create a list template. What that means is I wanna look for all document libraries that have the same name as what I'm going to, to specify in all the sister and subsites of a certain site. So then I go through and put in the site and then I pick the sample list or document library name that this discovery mode is gonna then go do. Once I've done that, it's gonna start aggregating all of the document libraries or lists that have the name list rollup doc library and all of the uh, siblings and subsites of this site. All right, so you kind of have to tell us what you're gonna look for first, then you point to where you're gonna search and then you give us the name, um, but you can also do um, on the discovery mode, uh, all the same list types or just specify specific lists and go through and click them all that you want to do. So there's lots of different features there. Now, once you've created that schema, um, you can go through and let me exit out of this. Right. Uh, you can exclude certain lists if you want, and then you can choose the columns that you want to display from that schema. You've now built your schema. It's called all list rollup doc libraries. And then in advanced search, right? When you set up the list search, instead of pointing to a specific list, we are going to point to that schema that we created. So we say, where does that schema live? We pick the schema and then it, the whole thing works exactly the same. But instead of searching a single list, we're now searching that schema, which could include many, many lists or libraries all in one search. Little complicated, happy to work you through it, but super powerful for your users, right? It's still for the user, just a search with all of the same features. But instead of searching one document library, I'm searching 10 or 12 or 13 that could exist in that sibling sites or subsites of that site collection that we uh, did. Super cool, super powerful, must have for all SharePoint sites. Okay. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Boop. All right, last one we wanna do is calendaring. Um, calendaring in the modern experience doesn't really exist, sort of a normal formal calendar. So what Calendar Plus does is it brings event lists together into a single unified view that looks like a calendar. And you can color code those events. We can search across multiple lists. And these lists can exist in different site collections um, anywhere that they are. So let's say you've got a marketing calendar, a dev calendar, and a um, corporate events calendar. And they're being managed by different groups. And you want one central calendar that rolls all of that together into a single view so you can see what's going on, right? So there's lots of things with week numbering, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we got a bunch of multi-month views, event views, and we can also bring in exchange calendars now, right? Such as conference room calendars or asset calendars or calendars that are being shared with everybody. Bring those in just like you would a SharePoint list. So what makes Bamboo calendars better than out of the box? Well, calendar, the, the, the way you would do it is typically an overlay, right? So we see the overlays on the left, but overlays must come from the same site collection. You can't bring them from different site collections into a single overlay. You can only have 10 calendars. That's a lot. That's kind of cool. But uh, permission issues, the user must have access to all the calendars. If a user doesn't have access to just one of those 10 calendars, they won't see any of the calendars, right? Color coding is super limited with no metadata uh, tagging for the categories. Uh, limited items can be viewed at once, right? So I think you can only see three or two if it's multiple. Um, and uh, no data selection from source calendars to filter that view, right? So over here on the right, we see Calendar Plus, and we've got filters for the different calendars. If I don't have access to one of the calendars, I just won't see the data for that one calendar. So we've got a great blog that outlines the differences between 
the limitations of overlays versus what you're going to get with uh, Calendar Plus uh, and, and what it does out of the box, all right? Again, we talked about Exchange support. You don't have to bring in Exchange calendars, but if you do, you need to grant it permissions to access the Graph API, and then it will start pulling in the calendars that you uh, feel that you want to bring in to there. Okay, so let's take a quick demo of Calendar Plus, and then we'll get ready to wrap things up. All right, so here we see Calendar Plus on a modern page, and we've got three calendars. We've got an Exchange calendar, another Exchange calendar, and then an Oversight calendar, which is just a list. They're all brought in together. They're color-coded. You can also see we've got categories, right? So categories allow us to filter certain things on and off, right? I can turn them all off if I want, and then just say, let's turn them all off. And then say, I just want to see businesses on the oversight calendar, right? Or I just want to turn on the whole oversight calendar. Either way, um, I can filter and drill in on using the legend. Now, once I've got everything turned on, it can be a little cumbersome. So we do have a search feature that allows you to search for items that contain words across all of your calendars. We've got a lot of different views. This is a month weekday view. So the month weekday view doesn't have Saturday or Sunday, but I can also change that to do a full month view showing Saturday and Sunday. I can do an agenda view, which shows just the days and then items within those days. And then I've got a work week view and I've also got multi month views such as quarter and year. Notice I've got pop ups. These pop ups are configurable so that I can just hover over an item and uh, view them. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because I think my screen's a little small. Uh, and you can see without having to click, I can see the details of those meetings. Of course, I can click on it and, and dive in there. So let's go ahead and look at how we set this up. Once you've added it to a page, um, you can go through and click the edit flywheel, which works just like with all of our products. It comes up here on the right. And then I can choose uh, to set up uh, the view, whether I want a Gantt view or a calendar view or a list view. Uh, whether I want the new button so that I can add events to those sub calendars. Again, all permission trimmed based on what the user has access to. And then I can also choose the size of my grid so that I can have more than, in this case, four items before I get the more view, right? You can make that as big as you want. Same thing on the multi-month view, right? I got 12 items before I get the more view over here on the right. So then I get to see more and then I would see all of them, right? So I only get 12 here. The data sources are pretty simple. You can just choose whether it's a SharePoint list or an exchange calendar. For the SharePoint list, let's go down to that one. So that'll make most sense. You give it a name, you give it a color, uh, you give it a font that you want. Again, those are the fonts that are in, the, in there. You tell us what URL the list exists for your calendars. Um, you then pick the list from your list of lists. And then you say, what is your title field in the column? What's your start date? What's your end date? And what do you want in your pop-up? Right, so that's this little pop up that happens there. And then you can choose optionally to have a category field, right? So that category field is your multi select. So let's say I wanted the attendees to be the category. It'll go grab all the unique items, grab the color codes. Let's go back because that's a big list to the category field. And uh, you can change your colors, obviously. And what you can also do is say, you know, in this rolled up calendar, all that stuff is important to the marketing group. But I just want to show um, holidays and, whoops, I don't know, and meetings, right? And business and gifts. I like gifts. So I can actually pare down the data that is displayed in this rolled together calendar without affecting the source calendar. You can also bring in just a view of data if you'd like, or you can also specify a filter condition. So that is, I only want to show events where the description equals, uh, let's say we call it uh, public. So people who are managing that source calendar, if they put in the description the word public, then that event will roll up to the calendar. So we've got some really nice ways to pare that data down. So you're not rolling all the data all the time to uh, that, that rolled together calendar. So, you know. You can show all if you'd like, but if you want to actually filter it down, you can do that as well. And then once you're done there, some nice things such as the calendar view, you can set your default view to, let's say, month, not the weekday view. You can choose to have, uh, you know, which views on the top here you want to display, whether you want week numbering or not. 
Um, and then if your legend can be on the bottom left or right. So if you want to move that legend around and then your legend order can be changed. So if I want that oversight calendar to be at the top and not at the bottom, you can do that. We'll go ahead and submit that. We'll see our changes. Republish it and we are ready to roll with our new default view being month, not month weekdays and our oversight calendar over here being on the top. And uh, we are ready to uh, have this calendar be an informative uh, calendar and the like for our users. All right. That was a speed version of the three must have products. All of these are available on our website um, for a free trial. And then let's to go through what the pricing is for the products we just saw. OK, Tabify is one thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. There is also a free version available that we talked about. If you're a small business, that is a, uh, not a corporation that's 100 employees or less. It is $439. If you're a not-for-profit with 300 employees or less, it's $439. We also have not-for-profit pricing if you're a big not-for-profit, which is, uh, I think, a 10% discount. Calendar Plus is $3,995. If you're a small business, it's $879. Simple List Search is $3,995. Again, these are perpetual license, first-year maintenance. Second-year maintenance is only 22% of those purchase prices, right? So you don't pay this every year. This is only the purchase price for the perpetual license and first year maintenance. Um, advanced list search, which is simple list search and list roll up is $6,392. That's a 20% discount of those two products bundled together. Um, if you're a small business, it's $1,278. Okay. If you decide to buy two products, let's say Tabify and advanced list search, We'll add an additional 20% discount on those initial purchases. And then if you buy three or more products, we'll put a 30% discount on there. So buy more, the merrier, um, low cost, high value. These are not subscriptions. These are perpetual licenses. You can use them on as many sites and site collections as you want for as many users as you need to as well. All right, we did it in 37 minutes. Uh, any questions I'll stick around for. If you want to um, start a trial, you can email us. Again, the new Tabify will be available next Wednesday. Uh, we'll send out a notice to everybody who's on the webinar that it is available, but there is a Tabify that is available today. It just works a little bit differently um, than the new one. So uh, if you are interested in it, I would wait till Wednesday after the holiday and uh, download it.